All right. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Learning Tech Talks, where we're exploring the landscape of learning technology, cutting through the fluff, and getting the questions answered you need answered to build out your digital learning ecosystem. Today, I'm joined by two of my friends and fellow podcasters. I've got Chris Rainey on the on the show again, uh, host of the HR Leaders Podcast. Thanks for being here, Chris. And Joel Beasley, he's the founder and CEO of LeaderBits. And today, we are talking about action-based leadership development. So uh, before we get into it, though, before we start talking about the topic, my favorite part is the question of the day, and uh, you've had a little bit of time to prepare for it. So as we're coming into the holiday season, Joel, the question for you and Chris, I'll, I'll probably call on you too, is what is a family holiday tradition that you have and how did it start? Yeah, so the tradition started, I think, last year um there's this movie like a short movie it's called it's like a frozen animated but okay. um it's about the frozen characters and they're actually searching for a family tradition uh for elsa i have two small children so okay. uh, it ages? has to be animated yeah uh ages two and a half and eight months so okay. uh what we did you know we watched this movie about them trying to find a family tradition for Elsa. Is that the wait? Is this the frozen Christmas? I think I know which yeah. one you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. Do you have I'm kids? I, I have five. I all love under that. the ages of eight. <laughs> so yes, I'm very familiar with it. Now, do you watch that on Christmas Eve or is this like a just any time you have an opportunity before the holidays? After Thanksgiving. After between, Thanksgiving. Yeah, we wait Thanksgiving and then you can watch it as many times as <laughs> <laughs> Until you can't, you literally can't tolerate Until it. Until they start screaming, yeah, yeah. Okay, have they? Have you taken them to Frozen Two yet? I uh, have not taken them to Frozen Two yet. Okay, okay. I'm waiting till it comes out on, you know streaming i don't have time yeah. to go to the movie theater i can't wait until someone logs in and they just hear this part as the right. first part this part of the first have you yeah, taken them to hear seeing frozen 2 people are like what am i listening to right now action-based right leadership development frozen yeah. i'm not seeing the connection we should extract yeah. it from like sven and like the different characters and like That's elsa's true. leadership style yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god <laughs> Let's do it. Elsa, right? Okay, see here, I'm doing the land the plane gesture. We're landing the plane on that one. Chris, yeah. how about you? What, what What's your tradition? Uh, what do you have? Well, before I jump into the tradition, okay. if everyone listening live on LinkedIn, let us know what you think of that intro music. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if you like the intro music. because I'm, I'm, I'm not changing it. I'm not changing it. It I'm pumps not, me up. I'm not saying it's bad. I couldn't. I had a massive smile on my face when I, I when could we, see it. So I could see it in the. It, 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 it worked. So I just want to just thumbs up on LinkedIn. See? You be in a bad mood. That music starts playing. You have 25 seconds to get pumped. I need that before I go on stage next time at one of our workshops. There you go. That's what there I need. You go. So, but in terms of the tradition, um, our family one is Scrabble. Okay. So playing it's like when I say Scrabble, it's like a war. Like you know, my family versus my wife's family, and it's like all out, like serious. Like it's, it's like whoever wins the Scrabble Christmas tournament every wow. year is like talking about it for months after, okay. um, as well. And there's a lot of cheaters. People just making up words that don't exist. Do you uh, have like to... the official Scrabble dictionary? And we do, but it, it it doesn't matter. Like it doesn't people, matter. People just people are like no, that's just wrong. The dictionary is wrong. Apparently, it doesn't <laughs> matter. And uh, Tasha, if, she, if you're listening now, you her, her mom's the biggest cheat. <laughs> she, <laughs> every year, every year she makes up new words, and she's very good at convincing us that they exist to the point where sometimes we don't even question it, and we realize after that in the dictionary it you doesn't do. exist. You yeah. Anyway, do. so that's our that's our okay. uh, after that's Christmas your dinner every year. It's, it's a Scrabble war. Begins. okay okay and you okay the way you describe this so your wife's family and your family you all get together a combination of yeah we get so it's a that's lot of people. awesome yeah it's a combination a of, of both people. um there's a lot of uh a lot of family members uh going okay. yeah so yeah so all right all right yeah, so. okay well they see that's a fun right that's a fun way to start the show it's not, not now we can dig into it i just um, want the whole show to be about family the traditions. whole show about family traditions yeah we've redirected <laughs> so, forget all the posts i've made over the last week you know what change of plans and uh for, for everyone on linkedin and again in the comments section below family traditions let Chris, us know yeah let us know what your family traditions <laughs> are and like and share this get, get bring people in because now we're going to start talking about leadership we development we promise <laughs> we got there in within five minutes so that's not bad um so yeah so today we're talking about leadership development and specifically leader bits and joel you know you and i have known each other for a while and i think what's interesting about leader bits a lot of it is the story behind it right i mean you it really when we talked, you didn't intend it to become what it really ended up turning into be. So 
tell us a little bit more about that story and how it started. Yeah, so I started writing a blog, which turned into a book. And before I published the book, I didn't want to get flamed uh, for publishing <laughs> a bad book. So I started sending early copies out to different leaders and technology space. And we had these amazing conversations about the content and the book. And those conversations were a lot of fun. And I wanted to keep them going. So we turned them into a podcast. Yeah. And that grew over the past couple of years. Today, it's the largest leadership and technology podcast in the world. It's called Modern CTO. But about you know, seven months after it got popular, after like NASA came on and Microsoft came on, what happened was uh, this one, one of my friends, Ben, uh, reached out and he said, hey, I hear this advice that these great leaders are giving. You know, I've got 110 leaders across 10 different countries. I want them to actually like take action and do something with, with some of that advice. You know, what, what do you think we should do? And at first I was like, you know, maybe we send you, like send them a link of the, the episode. But then later that weekend, I was talking with uh, my producer, Jake. And I said, hey, why don't we make a video where we like, cut where the individual gave the advice and then put some action steps behind it so that it's very clear about, you know, why they're doing what they're doing because it's advice from this leader. And then the actual steps that they could take to implement it. And then uh, let's do that. And so we did and we called them leadership challenges. Okay. We built them about 10 days, sent them out to, to Ben's people. He said, these are great. I said, well, that's awesome. But, you know, will you pay for it? Said, yeah, we have a <laughs> budget, right? Because things can be great. great. Yeah, we'll things can be great, but not <laughs> right. great enough to pay for it. Right? Love it. So yeah. he said, yeah. He said, yeah, we'll pay for it. We have a leadership budget. And I said, great. And so I got my first customer, called a couple other people up that were past guests. Say, hey, is this something you're interested in? Uh, you know, sales, you get like two out of 10 or whatever it is. That's a and good product. conversion, man. You're yeah. Good That's a, two out of 10 is pretty decent. I don't know. I've got <laughs> so then I went. So then I went and found a venture capital company in the city next to us. And I said, hey, you know, I've sold uh, some of this over the past couple months. Maybe we, we raise some money and, and build a sales team and an engineering team and improve everything. And they said, OK, so I raised some money from them. And then it's been, you know, about two years since we started, but about a year and a half since the, the money raise. And uh, we got about like 10, 10 plus people here. And what we ended up doing was you know, selling leadership development. Um, content, like the content, the challenges, but then a platform to deliver them and then a whole bunch of stuff around that. So I'll let, I'll let yeah. you talk now. <laughs> well, no, no, because I think that story helps frame up. One of the big things that I'm always interested in when I talk to different providers is like, what was that you know problem you set out to solve? And I think that's hearing the story helps understand how that grew. Now, what's interesting though, and we talked about this when you first started and then we talked about it, we've talked about it multiple times since, is when we first talked, Leader Bits was very focused, or at least your target audience was, you know, the technology teams, the, the you know, programmers, the software engineers. And then that's evolved too. And this is always an interesting discussion, I think, because there is this whole camp of, oh, well, leadership development's different for, for these people versus these people versus these people. And it Tell me a little bit about that because you've expanded that. Yeah. So at first we, well, I didn't have leadership development experience. So I thought, okay, well, this is probably just for technologists, right? This is just yep. how we, we learn as leaders. This is our story. And then what happened was we'd sell it into a company and then like marketing and other parts of the organization would say, that's so cool. Like, can we have licenses for it? Can we expand it? And we said, okay. So we started selling it to them. And then we had on our website, like leadership development for technologists. But what was happening is we were losing sales because the HR people were like, I can't just buy for technologists. Can't just yeah, buy exactly. Yep. Yeah. And so it was really hard for us. Like you can't convince them later that, oh yeah, yeah we're, we're not just for technologists because you lose the sale before we were actually getting in. And then their people were telling them about it. Using it. Yeah. And so the organization knew. So we had this challenge. We just changed our website and said, OK, well, if we're useful for everybody. If everybody likes it and, it and it's helping them all improve and develop as a leader, then let's just make it for everybody. And mm -hmm. we, we've since haven't had any of those issues. OK. Now, have you since you started it, because you're still doing the modern CTO podcast, so you're still yeah. talking to these leaders and creating new fresh content. I think that's oh, one yeah. of the challenges we have with, with these platforms is sometimes the content may be relevant and fresh now and then two years go by and it's all the same stuff. Have you seen in that content development cycle, because this is another big debate in the leadership development space. I had a conversation with somebody yesterday. It's, oh, leadership's, it's changing or it's different, you know, things like that. 
are you seeing a huge shift in leadership or is it still a lot of the same relevant principles that are standing the test of time? It's the same thing since the beginning of the test of time. What, what happens is people want to hear the same things in new ways. There's right. only like, if you look at, uh, I like movies, I'm a big fan of movies. So if you look at like movies and scripts, there's like 12 to 15 storylines. Yep. Yeah. Is that what it is? You just took a Pixar, right? It's the same yeah. model. All no, over, like uh, there's only so Disney. many stories you can yeah. tell, mm -hmm. right? And there's only so many variations of it. And I, I like Robert McKee. He's one of my favorite storytellers. Um, he's very popular for just a million movies. But uh, you, there's like indexes of all the available storylines in the world. And the same thing's true with like leadership. There's these same principles. We just want to hear it in new ways to make the same thing, the old things new again. Like so they, okay. they'll stick, right? And so that's why we have this unique advantage is we have all of these experienced seasons individuals sharing the stories in their own unique ways and that keeps the learner like pumped because it's always it's always different it's always something interesting and a new story a new person a new perspective on an existing principle and that's how we we will organize our um content based on principles and stories related okay. to those principles so that we know um how to structure them for our for our library okay so your principles are are really time standing and then within it it's different effort. and i think what i've seen at least the same applies in learning and development i think in addition, well leadership development learning development right they're all kind of the same umbrella is that the principles haven't really changed at all but the application of how you use those and largely technology is a huge component yeah. in that right the, the activities the way we display things you know Leadership didn't used to have to include how do you manage a remote team? How do you do that? The leadership, the way you do that isn't different, the way you execute it is. So so how many different principles, right? I'm just curious, like when you look at it, how there's 12 stories for all the movies in the world, how have you distilled down leadership development? Well, so we group it, like we'll have groups of, we, we don't group it on the front end, okay. we group it on the back end. So I'll explain the difference. Or, or I'll explain the process. We go to active pr practitioners that are experienced okay. and we ask them what they're facing, what they're learning, what they're struggling with currently, what are the lessons that they've learned over and over and over historically. And then we take that content and we then find ways to group it. Um, because if it's, it gives you the flexibility going forward for a okay. new group to emerge. If you're rigid and you do it in reverse and you say these have to be the groups and everything, and then what you're going to do is you're going to ignore things that will become trends later, which is what happens right now in the life cycle of content development for like 99% of the companies out there. It's like academics are studying and doing research and like it's just this really long time before things come around full circle yeah. before your learners are getting it. We produce multiple... Uh, challenges a week. And so we get information like really quickly to the source, like months and months ahead of, of things happening, which is really useful. We don't okay. sell that as a feature, but it's just a byproduct of what happens. Well, it's, but it's an important one to highlight because I think this is a challenge we face in learning and development all the time is this whole challenge of upskilling. And the challenge behind it is a lot of times by the data comes out, by the time the data comes out on what we should upskill, it's like, well, it's too late because, too late. right, we've waited so long to hear it. And then the production of the content and by the time it actually gets in the hands of people, it's, you know, well, thanks for that 2003 update on on what I should be doing. Um, That's so, one of the imme immediate things that I realized when I started this company is how quickly we can we can out and out um, compete our competition by just being able to just take that knowledge and execute it straight away. There's nothing in between. It's just no. like immediate execution of, 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 of whereas in the large companies I've worked in before, it takes so long for that knowledge to circulate throughout the organization that it's just like too late every single time. And then, and then all that spare time, they're just making things more complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We love to add complexity and barriers yeah. to, exactly. to everything. Yeah. So. so, so with this though, because this is another challenge that I think a lot of organizations are dealing with but then there is this balance between it is this whole concept of where do you draw the line in terms of customization, you know, of, okay, so an organization may say, hey, we have these specific capabilities or competencies, or you might say, some might say, well, we want to hear it from, how, how do you address that challenge in terms of, you know, for a specific organization? Yeah. So when we onboard a new organization, 
we part of the process is saying, you know, what's your culture? What do you okay. value um, at your organization? And then we take that and we connect the we look at our existing library and we connect in what we have to what what's important to them. Because if you have a leadership program and you're taking action, like you're doing things in the real world, it's important that those are connected to the company's value so that you can show the leadership team, hey, we value transparency and this individual took action, the way we value transparency and here's in their own words what they experienced with their team. And that's just much better than saying, okay, here's a video near transparency or about transparency and here's a check mark that the individual watched it. Like very big difference. You want people actually taking some sort of action in the real world because then the, me the experience becomes meaningful to you. Like I can tell you all day to save money, right? Yeah. It's a very broke, general term, right? Yeah. Very general. Yeah, but until you're broke and you realize how to manage your finances, it doesn't like it doesn't mean anything to you. You have to you have to go through. Like we can talk about swimming all day. We can talk about swinging a golf club, but you just I'm just gonna push you in the pool. You're gonna learn about some swimming, right? Like it, it becomes meaningful to you once you actually, you know, do the action. Even if you you have to get in the water, even with an instructor. Let's say you don't get pushed yeah. in. You get in the water with an instructor, and you're actually swimming for a minute, then you have an experience to talk about. And the fact that, like I'm from outside leadership development, so I was like just blown away about how this hasn't been figured out already. Okay, well, and the thing you talked about in terms of the mapping to values, in your example, save money, right? Maybe that's a principle that you're trying to drive in your organization, but depending on your culture and values, how you as an organization might push your leaders to accomplish that is going to be dramatically different. So that curation piece does have a significant impact and you can't just say save money this way. Yeah. So we, what we do is we, when we onboard them, we say, all right, here are the, here are the challenges, here are the actions that they're going to take when they complete this challenge. They're going to actually take this action in the real world. And we're, we're, we do the work because we have such a huge library. So we do the work and connect their culture items to the you know, suggested actions. And then they go through and approve and select or adjust what's right for them. And mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's what we want, right? We want our leaders taking action as leaders. And something else really interesting happens too. A lot of people don't like leadership development. Like I did a webinar with training industry. <laughs> and, and the biggest thing was, uh, how do we get our people engaged, like to want to do it? And I was like, well, you just got to be useful to them. Like, it right now we've kind of like beat up our people a lot because we've put them in like eight hour workshops and then, and then they don't, nothing actually changes in their real life. And so they've devalued it. They say, okay, I invest eight hours and get this much value X. I get X amount of value out of eight hours and that's not useful enough to them. So they're like, it doesn't work. I don't like it. I'm not going to invest in it, whatever. If you find a way to make the ratio worth it, like, okay, I'm going to invest, you know, five minutes, I'm going to learn from some really popular person that's I'm going to do something more about than it. me. And I know at the end of that five minutes, there's no quiz. I'm going to go take some, I'm going to go walk out there and engage with my team. Or I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something in the real world. Something leaders like to lead, like you, they like to do things. They don't like to sit there like in a two day workshop. Yeah. For... Yeah. <laughs> so they go yeah. do something. And then now, now the value's high. Wow. I invest. 10 minutes into this and I get this much benefit as a result from my team, like that's worth it. I like those things. And that's why we do well. Cause people are like, I like those challenges. Those I do those and they're useful and therefore I like them. Uh, explain for a second uh, to everyone listening because we take advantage that we all know how leader bits works so yeah. just take take a yeah. just very high overview for everyone of what it looks like. Cause you yeah. mentioned, because I think people listening, we know it, but I don't think everyone's really clear on how it actually works. So just let everyone know that quick. Briefly. Yeah. So you, uh, we use our own product, so it has to be super easy, right? So you get an email to your phone and uh, you click on it and video starts playing. It's a leadership challenge. It's a three, three minute video. In the video, you hear from a practitioner like a CXO at Microsoft, NASA, Verizon, whatever, you name it, big, big, big company or experience company you you get um the, uh hear hear from them hear some of the, like a little story or some of their personal experience uh, like well, let's say the example is giving credit right you hear about uh, give, giving credit from an executive at nasa how, how that's important to their team hear about that for two minutes then uh on the video you get steps after after they finish speaking you get steps like one two three to implement this right now in real time not later not whatever like to do something right now here are the three steps you need to take. You know, step one, like get up, go address your team. 
Step two, you know, focus on the, and, it, and it's got the steps for giving credit, right? And then, and then the last thing you do is you come back into the system and you put into this this text box we call the Reflect DB, like reflection database. Yep. Um, nobody wants to make a journal entry or a diary entry. They want to make a reflection <laughs> or an action plan. <laughs> or an action, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just this quick, like, hey, in your own words, what happened when you took action on this? Like, how did your team respond? Give us the quick what what, what went down. Then we have a certified coach. Sometimes that's our coach. Sometimes it's a coach at the company. We Our software set up either way that responds to that. So now the human knows a couple things. I'm going to go into this. I'm going to watch a short video from someone pretty cool that's done you know more than me, has had more success than me. Uh, I'm going to hear a, an interesting story. I'm going to get steps to take action, like concrete steps to take action in the real world. I know it's aligned to my company culture, which is fantastic. So my company is on board with this. And then I know I'm going to get a response from a human. Like I know Fabiana or Courtney or whoever my coach is, is going to respond to this. So there's some purpose there, much better than like a cold content library. So then they just do it. And so we will group the challenges into like a six week program um, for like new leaders. Like every time a new leader come or a person gets promoted to leadership, they go through the new leader program. Or every time someone gets promoted to an executive, they go through the executive program. And then that's it. It's, it's pretty pretty simple, effective way to get your leaders to, to like leading. So I'm curious on this one, because this is something that, you know, in our conversations, I hadn't, we even hadn't dug this deep into it on that, that individual responding back, right? So there's a human on the other end. Has that always been part of it? Or was that an ad after, like later on? Uh, since like the first month of the Okay. Week. So, so that's really been part. Did you in terms of the value, because I have to imagine that's got to be because I mean, this wouldn't be the first time there's been a program that says, hey, go do something and then right, do a journal entry. And a lot of times people don't take action on that because it's like, well, it just goes off to the ether or it holds them accountable, right, doesn't it? Right. It, it, so there's some accountability behind that. But how does that scale? And that's first of all, one, that's just part of leader bits. So that's not like an ad hoc add on feature. And two, how does that scale? for let's say a huge organization? Yeah, so one question at a time. What's the first one? The first one is that's just part of the package, right? That's just part of the leader bits program. That's not a separate add-on feature, correct? No, it's like baked into the core part it's of it. Baked right into the core. Okay. And then the other question, because you have a human on the other end, whether that's an internal person or yours, how do you scale that if all of a sudden you have, you know, tons of leaders that you're running through that? Yeah, so we have some interesting technology. It starts to learn the coach and then help predict the response. So that's how we use machine learning in the technology. Okay. So it starts to learn you as a coach. It learns the individual and them replying, and then it helps you um, respond to them faster. So over here, we're a startup, right? So we had to figure out, like, how do we make the most of our coaches? And at first, like, one coach could coach 25 people. And we're like, okay, well, we want to be able to do much more than that. Yeah. So we started applying machine learning because my background is engineering. And then uh, we got up to like 250 people. So right now it was at 25 people. Now we got a 10x improvement on our on it already and we'll just continue to improve it farther. Okay. So the right this is a good question because we talked yeah. about what is what is the AI machine learning doing in the platform. So really what it's yeah. doing is it's almost creating a a superhuman coach that's allowing them it's not so there is still a human on the other end. It's just assisting that human. So instead of having to start from scratch every time, yeah, it's like, hey, we pretty much know this is kind of where we are. Now you can tweak it, but you're not creating the whole response. Right. And it, and it learns and it gets better based on the human, like yeah. the coach. It learns the how the coach their talks. style, their okay. style of how they like to respond. And it's, it's really just useful for us as a business, but we found out like we just got Microsoft in our pipeline and they came to us and said, all right, last year, this one specific um, individual had trained 6,000 people under her man- leadership. Yep. And this year she's going to do 16,000. And wow. so that she, she was responsible for increasing the quality of, of training within the same budget. And so like, how do you do that? Well, you have yeah. to answer is efficiency and technology. And yep. so I said, okay, well, the thing that they really cared about, which most of our customers didn't because it's an internal yeah. feature, essentially, the thing they really cared about was the fact that we can multiply their coaches like 
tremendously. And so that was really, really useful to them. So we're they're right now in our sales pipeline. Okay. So from a right now we're talking business development here because that could be a product in and of itself, to be I, honest my, with my, you. My brain was just going all over the place there with different ideas of business development for that as well. So it's definitely yeah, I mean, a great, great it, product. It, um yeah, no, that's that's and I think again, this is one of those there's a huge debate in the learning and development space right now of like, well, do you take the human out or the machines taking over, things like that. And I I see it more as what you described, which is, well, let's use the machines power, to improve yeah. the efficiency mm -hmm. and take oh. out the, the tedious stuff that we're doing so that we can maximize the potential and let people do what they really actually love doing. Now, that has nothing to do with leadership development, but it kind of does. Interesting. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very, very useful. Um, and you're right. Like, it's not like, I think some of the companies made mistakes. Like, for example... Um, I'm a fan of, uh, you guys had this one person on and I have been following him for a long time, but he's got this like AI, essentially like AI leadership robot thing. Oh, I and know what you're on about. The last one, one of the last guests, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, Mersion. Mersion. Mark is Atkinson. That, is, is that not the guy? No. no. Oh, I you, oh it's, that's, it sounded like yeah. Mersion to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The AI chat thing. Um, oh, oh, oh. Leadx with Kevin Cruz. Leadx, Kevin. Yeah. That Kevin. Yep. Yeah. So like, I think like that's not going to work. <laughs> like as far as what we've learned. So first of all, I have no like dog in the race because I'm a technologist 17 years outside of this leadership space. But the thing that makes me say that like, okay, that that's, you need a human in the loop because we don't care when it's a robot. Like robots are really great for transactional things, right? But they're not really great for like a, attempting to be a human. They're, like we don't like it like instinctively. We just, no one I've talked to like really loves it. Like if I'm going to go order a pizza or like do some sort of transactional thing, transactional, about, pay, pay my bill, pay my bill. It, I, I love it. They can give me, it can support me without me needing. But when you're, when you move into like coaching, like it just, you need, you need a, you need that human relationship. And, and here's why, because it will get to the point where the AI will work, but you're going, you're going to have to constantly use real human responses you need you need enough data of real humans responding like i tell our investors i say look it might take five years ten years at some point our ai is going to be good enough where you don't need the human in the loop and we'll have different personalities of different coaches and they'll be able to respond flawlessly to these challenges once we hit a certain data data point we're a lot of data sets away from that right now we're predictive we help the coach the coach adjusts but we're watching that and that's learning constantly and amplify that times you know millions of coaching responses over five ten years and we're going to have an ai that's trained well enough to respond with the human not needing to edit it like they will just edit it less and less and less and less and less and to the point where it's so good it's just perfect okay and so that distance is like a decade and in fundamentally i think we're like first principles that that uh, his system breaks down kevin's breaks down and is uh they, there's no, they're not ever having a human start. They're like always doing just uh, the robot. Like it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like how it'll work, like how it'll keep people engaged. If you look okay. at the engagement rates, I just don't think that that. Yeah. So do you yeah. find with yours, do you find a response rate, right? Do people actually take action on those? So I did this thing and now I'm responding. What does that, what does that response rate look like for you guys? of like complete like how many people watch the challenge to complete it actually end up putting the like if you were to look you just explain the cycle right they get a yeah. thing they they take action then they they put some information back and then the coach responds what do you see in terms of people engaging through that whole life cycle okay so i'll answer it two ways the first way like if you start watching the video and you complete it we have 90 percent completion rate of like they they started they allocated time to watch the video then yeah. they took the action and completed the challenge there's that and then there's like when they start a program like a six-week program how many complete that that's very dependent on the the company's culture because some companies make it optional some companies make okay. it mandatory that's fair, that's fair. yeah so okay. it's really high. It's over 50% uh, when it's optional. Like okay. if you just put this system out to your company and say, hey, yeah, just throw it out more. there. <laughs> if you want more, go over here. Uh, you get 50% uh, completion rate of people doing the program. Uh, but if you make it mandatory, it's you know over 85, 90%, depending on the company. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. 
go ahead go ahead Chris. i'll say and and when we spoke last time there was quite some while ago the manager can also see an overview in the dashboard of the of the activity for all of its team right which is something we haven't spoken about yet yeah so I, can, I can see on i can see my team and see who's taken what actions and who's then actioned that yeah, you might want to what, share the screen. Yeah, let's share the screen. Pull it up. Let's yeah, pull it up. Yeah. Let's look at the analytics behind some of this stuff. Yeah, because I love that part of it, obviously, to be able to see my team and who's watched what and who's actioned it, et cetera. Yeah. So two, two, a couple of things. Can you guys see the screen, by the way? It's not, not yet. It's working on it. Okay. When you can, let me know. Uh, yeah, by the way, there's like a two-click uh, thing. <laughs> you have to hit like screen share, select it, and another button. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah I didn't do it. Thank you for saying that. I clicked there shared screen and the button like pressed in, but it didn't do it. All right, now, there we go. It? Oh, hey, there yeah, we go. Yeah, we're going Inception. Yeah, so a couple things here. The first thing is when we started out, we branded it as leader bits, right? Can you go full, can you go full screen on that, Joel? Uh, yeah, sure. We're seeing your desktop. Yeah, thanks, mate. Boom. Appreciate it. So when we started out, we, it was all leader bits, right? And then what we found is that it's way more successful if we brand it to the customer. Okay. So we change the cus the the logos because then it's like it becomes more personal. It's like when you get when you go from individual contributor to first time leader, you go into the TLM's leadership university and you do the first time leader program, right? Yep. That's so that's very useful. Um, so we have it. Uh, we build everything mobile first because most of our traffic's mobile, and yeah. So you, we were specifically talking about some analytics. Um, and, and yeah, so as a manager, what do you, what do you, yeah, at? as a manager, you're going to be here. It's going to be your dashboard. You're going to see, you got, you know, your period of, of time you can select here. You can see your different team members. You can drop down and pick different teams. You can click on different people to like focus on and jump into like a specific individual. Uh, the value stream will show you based on the people you have access to, uh, different actions that were taken and the challenges, and then you can click into them and you can actually see their entries, right? So you could see what they, the challenge they took. If you want to see the challenge, you can, you can read it, read the transcription, or you can watch it real quick. Uh, you can see their response to the challenge. You can see a little bit, this AI isn't trained very well. The coach is just very short here, <laughs> uh, yeah. um, but you can see some of the, the responses and then you can see the the comment chain below. And then you just go down. So the, the person responding, this is like a view in my entries. Um, I'm, I might be a coach for multiple people or in a, and I want to respond to people like back to back. So this is just all my unresponded entries. And I can go down and respond them, respond to them. And go are back you seeing well. with this, are you seeing organizations take this and integrate it into their talent management and performance management process? Or is it just kind of a separate, it's kind of their own little leadership microchasm versus, hey, okay, this is part of the broader performance management piece. I'm just curious. Yeah, well, I'll be direct. Like most of our customers today are, they have like 70 to 100 leaders. They usually are pretty new to this and their people okay. are asking for leadership and they're saying, hey, we're growing. Uh, we target companies growing at like more than 30% year over year. And that have between you know 500 and 5,000 people. But what happens now is we're getting enough customers where people are saying, hey, you know, you sh this is actually really useful technology. And that's how we got Microsoft in our pipeline and a couple of like we got some government contractors in our pipeline that have several thousand people, too. So we're starting to get referrals to much larger customers. OK, so, yeah. Well, and on that. And again, if can you pull up what it looks like? Well, and while we're doing that, I guess one question I have based on your site um, this is obviously we're talking about this at the enterprise level, but at the same time, this isn't something that only is an enterprise off, right? Can an individual go, you know, engage with leader bits if they're looking just personally to say, I want to improve my leadership journey and not only be able to do that. I'm just curious how you're handling that. Yeah. So if we go to like leader bits, um, and we go to as an individual ownership course. So this is something we're launching right now where you could just jump into like a very specific course that's like you're going to take these actions over six weeks and okay. just buy like a one-off course here. And okay. so that's something that we're just launching right now. Okay. So yeah, individuals can do it. Um, but yeah. Okay. 
Got it. So with this one, you know, one of the questions that that comes to mind with it is there's obviously this sometimes this expectation and and I'm constantly battling this back in learning and development that like if we buy the right tool magically <laughs> it'll fix itself. Like yeah. we go out and, and buy leader bits and then we throw it into our ecosystem and presto, our leaders are developing. We, we've solved the problem. How do you, how do you work with organizations on that? Cause even you said, when you talked about the engagement, like, well, it depends on how much they really pour into it as part of your process. How are you working with organizations to help them make the most of it versus just have another thing that people can access? Yeah. So it's going to be different based off of each organization. So we get some organizations, like the ones that we're targeting, this unique thing is happening. So if we are targeting 500 to 5,000, um, they will typically be doing something new for the first time in leadership development. Their people will be asking for it. They'll say, okay. I want a way to stand out. I want a path to more. I want it, like if a promotion comes up, right? This is a very common use case. Uh, promotion comes up. There's five people who could, you know, uh, tenure wise, they're available for promotion, right? There's no way for them to stand out in a very analytical, like data driven, direct way. Uh, so they all like say, I want it more, I want it more, whatever. Uh, one of the things that's interesting about this program is now if you've got those five people and they're competing, you could say, all right, you're going to go through the leadership program and we're going to see how you, you did. And if you do that with a, like a workshop and you get smile sheets or whatever, that's not a great indicator. Or if you do some like static, like, oh, here's your assessment where we're going to dehumanize you and make you go through sliders and then judge you based on that, that's not great either. But if you can have them actually go take action as a leader and you can actually see in their responses, their text of, of, of how they thought about that, then you can make your decision based off of seeing how they handled all of these challenges, who's most right or most experienced for this position. Okay. And that's just the power that we give the company. So that's pretty useful too. Yeah, well, and I think I was in a <laughs> LinkedIn thread the other day on, on a, this very topic that, a lot of times we just ask questions and just see, okay, yes, no, multiple choice. Did people get it right or wrong? And really through what you're doing with leader bits, you're actually asking people, are you able to cognitively take this information, process it and think about what am I going to do with it, put it into action and then actually now be able to do that. Now with a measurement standpoint, you know, so they go through this one action and, and you have that data point. Does it also then have the ability to have them go through a similar or, you know, type challenge and you can see have they developed along the way? Absolutely. So we've got a feature in there called instant queue. So if you see them do one challenge and you see the response, you can immediately from that screen, like suggest a follow up challenge that's similar to that. OK. Yeah. And okay. we have that. We have boomerang. So if you do a challenge as an individual and you really like it, you can say boomerang, like give me this challenge again in two weeks, six weeks, eight weeks. Okay. Okay. So what does, I want to talk about the whole process soup to nuts. Cause I think sometimes this is, I think one of the challenges organizations face is they move into this digital age and they're starting to buy new technology is what that process looks like. So from the time, let's say you're, you're bringing this, this in, um, and, and now implementing it, you talked about this curation piece, what timeline wise, what does that look like for an organization from the time they say, okay, we, we want to move forward with this. How, how much time does it take to actually start to align this stuff to a point where you're actually implementing? Yeah. So from the moment that like they sign the proposal and they, we do the payment is about two weeks till we launch. It's a very fast process. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It, the long part is like from the moment they meet us for the first time interested until the moment we get that proposal signed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the long I, I part. Bet. I know how that feels. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Now, because, because you already have everything in place, right? So it's not like yeah. you're integrating with another system or that you're creating the content. You already have everything. It's then, I suppose, that those two weeks is then about aligning with their culture and their business, their business challenges, right? And making sure you're aligned there as opposed to anything else. Because yeah, we have we have the exports for like the X API and and the data. Well, that's what I was going to ask about. Yeah. Is so for some organizations, right? This may be a new journey for them. They may not have you know, an LXP or a portal that everybody's already going to. And so this is kind of the new thing that they can drive people to. But other organizations are going to have lots of 
of different things. How does leader bits? Cause it looks like from what you showed, it's a separate portal. How does that integrate into, you know, an, an organization's ecosystem? Yeah. So we have the data exports for it set up okay. in the formats that they want to be able to integrate it and pull it in for reporting purposes. Okay. We can also, if they want, we can take the videos and the content and just let them put it into their system that they, if they want to do that. But the, then you lose, like I say, you lose okay, the I'm, process. Yeah. That's the whole, so point, like, the whole you, point of it. Yeah. I know if you want to give us money and that's the only way you're going to give us money. We'll gladly take your money. <laughs> um, <laughs> like, yeah. I love your honesty there. That's uh, yeah. We get, same, we, we get the same thing as well. As well. Yeah. We, yeah, we get the same not... thing with our content where people say, how, Chris, how much is it to purchase all your video workshops and just throw it in? I was like, kind of defies the point of, of what I know. just throwing it in the system with everything else. It's like, but if you give me money, then I can help the other people. <laughs> Who do want to do it? <laughs> Who, Who do, do want, want to do it, right? <laughs> right? It's like you don't, you don't, if you own a gym, you don't turn away like the person who you don't believe will do well with it, right? You say, all right. <laughs> Let's, let's try it. As we'll long as you're it. setting realistic expectations yeah. of them, then I guess I can I can at least get behind it's that. Always a it's always what they ask for, Chris. It's what it's what if it's what they ask for, Chris. As far as what we're saying, not not s selling them something that's not going to deliver. Obviously, yeah, uh, we set yeah. expectations really correctly. Um, okay. We say, look, the our whole story is a series of innovations, starting with a basic video. You know, we added the reflect DB thing in there and we added that in there because we wanted them to like make notes on what they learned. And then we were reading the notes, you know, on Fridays at the office. We said, we need to be able to respond to these people. Let's build a, a mechanism okay. that we can respond to this entry. And then that ended up being really useful. And we said, okay, well now that has to be like a part of what we do, like to the point where we won't sell it without it. Like we will sell it, um, uh, you have to have your coaches or you have to use ours. Like somebody, you have to have a somebody human. Somebody has to be doing that. Human yeah. Person. Yeah. Um, it's, if it's going to be like branded to leader bits or if, if we're going to be involved at all, uh, like if you wanted to export the videos and do your own thing and it's like not really associated with us, that's fine. But like if you're a customer, you know, of ours and we're providing you these results and, and you actually need these business results and you're going to be held accountable to them with your executive team for getting your people to do stuff. You need to do it in this, in the, in this, in this format. Um, so far, people have been like really uh, okay. smart about it. Yeah. Yeah. What's the um? I love I love since we first spoke and we all got introduced to each other how your business has evolved and you've yeah. added constantly adding on based on the feedback of your customer you're constantly adding features. What's the next? What's in the pipeline? Give us a sneak peek. Ooh. What's the, what's the yeah. next ev evolution of that? Yeah, the evolution is our, our stuff so effective and people like it so much that um, they say I want to be able to go in and get on demand content okay. and they like like we don't have like a library you can browse because you get the netflix scroll issue people will scroll for 10 minutes not actually take an action and there's your 10 minutes like yep yep you've wasted time yeah but then we found out that there's like there's this other part of content that you can't do as an action-based leadership challenge like for example firing someone like that's not like the challenge you want to get, like, right? But <laughs> go yeah, practice exactly. this. <laughs> here's, here's the free step. Here's the free step. So let us know how it went. Well, yeah. I wasn't planning on firing anyone today, yeah. but I guess, I I guess leader bits point. told me I had to. That's like an HR point. nightmare. <laughs> you yell at you if you don't, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so um, what, there's this other type of content, and uh, like, diff like having like difficult conversations yeah. is not something you want to necessarily do as a challenge. You want sure, that to be. Sure. Like, it's very we started, we're mm -hmm. building out the section called on demand and we, we take these 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 concepts like letting someone go having difficult conversations and we build a basic version based on our culture because we use our own software and then we let the companies customize it to them because for example uh there are some like in sweden so we've got customers in sweden letting someone go in sweden is very different than all, yeah. our culture here in the united states or at least in florida because we're an at will state. So like in Sweden, you actually have to go through this process. Uh, there's like, it's like a state re government regulated. Like you have to go through this corrective process and like mm -hmm. step one, step two, step three, you cannot, it's not an at will place. Um, so that is needs to be customized per organization. So we said, all right, we'll just build, people are asking for it, we'll build ours. And then as our customers come in, we'll just customize each module for them. That way it's so simple. Like Chris, right now, I don't know how you guys do it, I'm actually interested to, to for an answer to this question at GE. If I'm going to let someone go, where do you do, like coach me real quick as like pretend I work uh, in another division and I come to you as another uh, GE person. 
And I say, Chris, I need to let someone go point me in the direction of where I can go learn how we let people go here. What, what, what do we do? Yeah, that's a it's a good question um, in terms of I don't necessarily know that I have just the clear answer on this is exactly how we do it. Um, you know, I mean, I think you would it would likely be directing you to the HR portal and there's resources through there. Now, is there a clean, you know, this is where you go to get coaching or guidance on how to do that well? That I'm not sure about. So this is like a page in the HR portal that like this is but how we let your people Your answer, go. Christopher, is the same in ninety percent of companies, it's go to HR, right? That's the problem. Right. It's like it's a HR issue rather than a leadership issue. And it should be a leadership issue. I shouldn't have to go to HR to learn how to let someone go. It'd be great to have some content like what you're talking about to be able to train me how to do that. Because I had to do that. When I yeah. first had to let go of my employee, I had to go to HR and be like, how do I do this? What, what are my guidelines? What well, and it like? tends to be, right, when you do it that way, it tends to be much more process-oriented than exactly. people-oriented. Exactly. It's like, well, this is it, the process. You fill out this form. You start And it's horrible when you this actually have the conversation. Is. So when I'm sitting in that meeting letting go, uh, the first person I ever let go of, I had a HR manager in the room with me, and it was so impersonal because I was following this script I was given from HR about how I need to let this person go, right? And it took all of the human connection out, and it was horrible. It made the experience terrible for them, and for me at the same time. So that's, yeah, that's something that I never did that again. <laughs> yeah. that. I still follow the guidelines, but obviously made sure there was just some, I'm actually a human. This person is another human. We both have feelings and emotions. This is all we, and so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's yeah, an so interesting like, question. Yeah, so the, there's a lot of confusion and what, what will actually happen is they often won't go to HR, they will go Google it and yeah. use whatever content that comes up first. So like the fact that you have and, and that directly is the spirit of your company because how I get fired is how your company, your brand fired me. It's not about how you as a manager, it's how your brand fired me. I, I take this that away. The way away. the organization treated me. Yep. Yeah, it's the way the organization treated you. So the the fact that like that's something our customers are asking for, like we want you, you guys do content so well, like we want we want to be able to say when people say, how do we let people go? Here, here's how our culture is because because we connected it so closely to their culture with the actions From they're the like beginning where's yeah. the video for how we let someone go it's like well you know here at leader with our culture yeah That's yeah great. our culture is i'll just give you the, the quick overview of, of our culture at leader bits on how we let someone go the first thing is we talk to the person like what's going on in their personal life uh, people here are high performers uh, that's like a prerequisite to work here we are a smaller organization so i get that that's easier to get you know because i'm closer to the hiring process but High performers, uh, what will happen is the first is we have a conversation like, what's up, man? Like, like very casual conversation. Like, how, how are you doing? You know, we notice your performance is like not awesome. What's what's up? And we just have a conversation. There's obvious there's always something going on at home. There's some reason why they were great and they're not being great now. That's like step one. And we say, you know, we need to get you back. We coach them to get get them back on track. Wait a couple of weeks, put a calendar event in our calendar, check on them in a couple of weeks. You know, how, how are they? How are they doing? Are they still dropped off? Have they perked back up? Like what's going on? Uh, if if the word, we'll go on worst case scenario here, right? So we can get all the way to the end uh, and land the plane. So <laughs> well, let's say let's say that they 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 still don't don't, don't let it crash. Yeah, go on. Okay. No crashing. <laughs> uh, so let's say it's still going bad after after a couple of weeks. And we say, okay, look, now we're going to put these like specific metrics and monitoring in place. And so you, you know, you're here, you know, the way the business works is customers pay us, we get money and we use that to make our paychecks. And so the th the work you do here directly affects your, our ability to pay you and pay your coworkers whole company to make the whole organization exist. Like that's how a business works. Surprisingly, you have to continuously put that in front of people. Cause if you go out and ask your colleagues about how your business works, and how you make money like a lot they, of people don't know they don't get you have yeah, to but even more important joe you'll agree in a smaller business as well right yeah as well which is where it's even more important literally if you know in my company with the seven of us if three people aren't performing that's a huge issue in it's sales let's issue. say you know how am i going to make payroll so right and exactly. surpri surprisingly people are still like oh wow that's how we all get paid. Yeah, there's no magic <laughs> fountain over here. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Business units die. Like, what? What did they just laid off two thousand people at one of the uh, that real estate startup company? Mm -hmm. um, so, so to continue with the performance. So then, this is just how Leaderbits does it at, at our actual company. And so then we say, okay, we got these metrics in place. You have to produce this output. This is what you were producing before. Like, hit these things, monitor them. If you don't, you can't be on the team. Like. Very simple. We set that expectation lightly up front. And then we just have a series of like two or three touch points after that where we monitor their output. 
And then we just have the final conversation with, look, you know, you, you missed your goal on, on this two week chunk. You missed your goal on two, this two week chunk. We, we said, we agreed and we shook hands that if, if you miss it, you know, two out of three or three out of four, right. whatever it is that you can't be on the team anymore. And they will be so nice about it. Yeah. Often. Well, like, cause they get it right. I mean, what it. you're talking about is a human centric yes, exactly. performance management process yeah. where it's like genuinely the goal of that is to get the person to turn around and you know put, set them on there and if they don't then it's like well hey i mean you knew what the expectations were yeah you didn't you didn't yeah. meet them like yeah. that's who you, the only person you, you can people, really blame is yourself so i can you, see yeah. where you get people at that point even saying you know thank you for the opportunity like it ends yeah, that way they do like, uh, yeah. And and a lot of times it's like this clearly wasn't the right you know, role for me. And sometimes and later on, I end up meeting people. They go, thank you so much. Right. Uh, I'm so I'm glad like, that you I'm let so me go because I, I hated know. that job. I was miserable. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't performing. And I'm actually glad you, you got me out of there because it pushed me on to something else. Uh, yeah. Well, let's yeah. We'll jump, jump back into. Uh, yeah. So I, well, one question I have, because that, that is right. I think that's regardless of the platform. I think that's an important tell, story to tell about really leadership in general and and this whole you know concept of how it's not evolving but the expectations and the bar is getting higher because talent has more opportunity to say i can go do something else i don't need to sit here and be you know be treated this way or feel like this i'll go somewhere else and i think the bar for leaders is moving up yeah so one one other question that i have that i'm i'm very curious about Joel because I've been in this space my entire career. There is no shortage of leadership development stuff out there, platforms, content, things like that. I know we've talked about some of the things that you do unique, but when people say, why leader bits, why not? And I won't throw other names out there, but <laughs> yeah. why leader bits? What's your response to that? How do you say this is what differentiates us? Yeah, the action-based connected to your culture. Do you want your leaders you know, taking action? Yes. Do you want it connected to your culture? Yes, we can do that. Okay. Uh, yeah, and that is obviously, and to be honest, for someone who speaks to HR executives every day, a lot of times that's what's missing in their leadership development programs. <laughs> yeah. So uh, a lot, because I even asked, I, I'm like, how much you spend on on that leadership development program? And I'm like, oh, tell me how you quantify the success of that. What does that look like? And I was cr crickets. At the end, so. our, our pricing is pretty simple too. So yeah. Our average customer has got 70 to 100 liters. They're paying about $35,000 a year, which breaks down to about you know, $499 uh, a person. Okay. Uh, so, and then it, it caps at that. So you hit $35,000. It's $499 a person up until $35,000 a year. Once you have $35,000 a year, it's unlimited, okay. it's unlimited, but the coaching is a variable price point. So we charge okay. by the hour for the coaching. And so you can, you know, if you have, let's say, if you have 500 liters, you're going to pay $35,000, right? As like the base rate for unlimited people. And then you're going to pay base. So you're only paying usage based. If they're not going through the content, then they're not doing the challenges, then they're not getting coaching. So if your people don't use it, you're not paying for it, which is like okay. really, really useful for companies with like 10,000 people or 5,000 people because it allows them to have this amazingly high quality experience available to them um, without it, you know, being really expensive. Okay. So from a one other one that I wanted to ask earlier and I completely missed it, but now I'm going to bring it back is right as you're expanding. And I think this is a challenge for a lot of tech companies as data privacy is becoming a big thing. So, you know, now not only are you having data on people and where they're developing, but you're also having right their actions and, and all of this data, how in a, in a world where people are a little bit skeptical about data and what are organizations doing with that? How are you ensuring that people feel safe and secure that they can engage with this? They can put in genuine responses and you know, their, their data is not compromised. Yeah. So that's a great question because it's hugely huge topic right now. You get, you see breaches of biggest brands in the world. So I get to talk to the greatest technology, technology people on the, on the planet on, on a daily basis. And so the way that the, the security community approaches it, is they approach it as a, it's not if, 
if there's compromise, it's, it's how do we handle it it's when. when. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, how, how, and as you said, how to handle it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's frameworks on how to handle security, like best practices and hygiene. So you'll see those in different, you know, labels and badges like SOC certificate, like different. There's a there's a large amount of uh, different types of compliance you can do. So we hold ourselves to the same standard as uh, like payments, bank, banking payment system, okay. uh, which is really useful because it just protects us from like an investment standpoint. Like you can't say like, why did you choose a lower security thing? We just chose really high security, <laughs> right? It's like, let's just do that. It's And it costs us money too. Like we have to pay people for it. Um, but we just, we do a lot of testing on the system. We follow best practices. We check all the boxes that you can check. And then that's, if knowing that us as a leadership program took the same steps as like your bank account, it gives people a lot of comfort. Okay. Well, and it's one of the things when we first talked that I thought about from a, that I was impressed, you know, with you leading it is the fact because of your background in yeah. technology and the connection you have, understanding the implications of technology, understanding some of these things, understanding the architecture and some of that stuff. You you weren't, you know, a leadership development keynote speaker that that suddenly decided I'm going to make some tech and not that that can't work. I've seen it work well, but I think, you know, your ability to look at that is is a compelling argument. Yeah, I spent 17 years figuring out um, how to not only build and scale the technology, but how to make something that the humans want to use. And I mean, I'm also human, so but I like calling them humans. <laughs> Are you though? Are we sure? Yeah, is that like your your like, AR avatar? So yeah, I, I step back and I think like, how do we make it so that it's an enjoyable experience? That's why we can't, and we use it here. So that's why we came with the concept that that it comes to you. So like, you don't ever have to go log in and do your learning. Like, it comes to you. You don't have to log in. There's magic links. You just tap on the video and it like starts playing. Like we, everything we do, we make it as we make we want to make it enjoyable. Like. People associate leadership development often with like going to the dentist. Like it's not a fun thing, right? People are constantly, well, they keep pushing it down to their direct reports and they don't want to do it and they don't have time. and It's not that important. And I'm saying that it is important to them. What they're saying is the method you're trying to force them to do, they don't see as valuable. Yep. And so the bit, one of the biggest things with deploying into organizations that we've learned is we have to uh, go in, get a handful of the early adopters, give it to them, and just let them talk yeah. because that'll get everyone else on board. If you put something really great in the company, you put, go put a cake in the room. People are going to talk. There's going to be, <laughs> <laughs> people are going to eat it. Slack messages. Everyone's going to be telling everybody, boom, the cake's going to, you put something that people want in an environment and the word will spread. And the problem is we're just not putting things people want and love in the environment. And that's what we've been able to do with, with leadership training. And, and so that's why we've been successful. I think that right as a reflection point for and it, I think it. sometimes we we take we take a beating but I think sometimes that beating is deserved in our industry and in that you know we we sometimes are out there saying well people just don't like we're doing such amazing things and people just they just don't engage with it they're they're too busy their boss doesn't do this and but, but to be fair that's a that's a component of it but I think you're right in that if we look in the mirror when people find value in something they will do it they will do it and i think that's that's an important message here's my question for you christopher and my yeah. question for any l d person watching this when is the last time you and your peers sat down and spent an hour block or a three hour block asking the question how do we make something our people will love like our leaders will actually love how do we make something that will bring them the most amount of value possible in the least amount of time and how do we take and do that People don't ask those questions. So I'll tell right. I'll give you my take because the, the point is I ask that question, but I don't just ask that question. I go ask the people. That's my yeah. goal. Is to say, what do you want? Like, what is it that's going to make an impact? Because I can sit in the Crystal Palace and say, well, I, I have all this L and D experience. I know what people want. No, I don't because I need to find out from them. And that doesn't mean I just blindly take. Oh, so and so said they want this because there is that level of. I hear what you're saying, but what are you saying underneath what you're saying? But I, I agree that that's an important well, you step. You can build that's something and use it yourself. Like look at Elon Musk. Like he listens to the people about the he car. He listens. But he's also driving the prototype every single day. Right. Right. And so like if you're building something, I, I've i never seen the leadership development teams, and this is just in my you know ex limited to your experience interacting with them. I, I always see them like sitting in, like you said, like a tower making decisions and, and, and asking questions. And, you know, you know, 
put, putting out surveys and reports and all of this stuff. But like, they need to build something that they have to use themselves on a day. Right. Like, that's fair. Right? Like, would what, you use it? If the answer is no, then what are you doing? You should be building a program in your peer group and your team that you have to use, and you bring you get some outside input, but you should create that masterpiece and enforce yourself and your peers to use it and collectively create it. And then once you know that it's something you all love and that it's measurably effective and that it's useful, then spread it out further. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, we are at time and uh, Joel, this has been great. Uh, you know, it's fun that I think the last time all three of us were talking about the same topic, we just took a deeper dive on leader bits. Uh, so thanks everybody for tuning in. Be sure to like, comment, share this post, tag in somebody who would benefit from the conversation. And you know, if you want to learn more about leader bits, reach out, let them know I sent you. And uh, thanks, Joel, for being here and, and have a happy you know holiday season as we go into it. Thank you, guys. All right. Thanks, everybody. See ya. Bye. Uh, bye bye.